Welcome back folks. In the last workshop video, I framed up some doors and realized at some point that they were more like rhombuses <laughs> instead of uh, rectangles. So uh, to confirm that, I clamped them to the side of the truck, stepped back and looked and realized something was definitely amiss. In order to do that, I figured I'd cut some shims, like you see me doing here from this 2x4. Anytime I've built a door from scratch in the past, what I would do is use those shims to suspend the door in its final location, as if it had hinges, which this one didn't have yet. It's a bit of a meticulous process. You would step back, make sure everything is real nice, until you finally got it in place. Then you can add your braces and your hinges, but with the braces already in place, I was having a devil of a time getting the door where I wanted its final position to be. Well, you see the gap here? I'm getting bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger to the point where I can put my finger in there. I'm going to assume that the truck is square. Whatever the cause, whether my doors are crooked and not square, which is likely, or it's the truck, I've got to make the doors match the opening. I could also check with the Pythagorean theorem, the 3, 4, 5. If I measure 3 feet down, 4 feet across, there should be 5 feet in between those two marks, and then I'll know what's square and what's not. But again, it doesn't matter. So I'm just going to assume that the truck is okay and my doors aren't. And what I'll do is I'll back out these screws, the, the two on the top and the two on the bottom that do this and that. And that should allow the door to come down and once it's square then I'll put the screws back in but this has got to be square before I put the facing on it I love how doors can sometimes screw with you it's not like building a, a bench or something you know a countertop that could be slightly off for years and years and years and you never notice it this is gonna let you know right away that something's off when the door doesn't close or open or whatever so I'm going to get this squared in the opening, and uh, then we'll put the face on it. Shit. So I slammed that wedge in there, trying to get the top to be the same spacing on the sides. And what's happening is, I'm getting a big gap here in that brace. By pushing that up, I'm increasing that space. I'm starting to rack the doorway back to square. It's fighting me though because this one is getting tighter and tighter. As that one gets looser, this one gets tighter. I checked the box. The truck is square. I measured up four feet, made a mark, measured out three feet this way and it diagonally it was almost perfect as close as you can get to five feet so that means the truck is square I'm not surprised what I did wrong is I put those pieces in those braces while the square was on the floor and I didn't have the rectangle of that door perfectly square and I'm going to assume that I did the same thing with that one if it was slightly off that's going to be an issue however um, no problem we take a few steps back I'll pull the braces out I'll cut the panel for the door, attach it. I know I can make the panel nice and square, which will square up the frame. It is what it is. I probably could have edited that out. And you would have had no clue. No problem, let's fix it. Well, I have learned many, many lessons in life because of making mistakes. It gets a little bit easier the older you get. <laughs> Hopefully using this particular material is not a mistake. Cement board is heavy, but it's thin. Plywood's not too light either, not for nothing. And unlike plywood, this cement board has no grain or anything like that or imperfections. By the way, never do that with your tape measure. <laughs> Uh, after marking it, two different ways. Once the short dimension, and then along its long dimension. Cutting it was actually a breeze by just using a circular saw. Fortunately, it was a windy day, and it blew all the dust away from me. 
which actually can be pretty nasty compared to plywood. I cleaned it up with my little leaf blower. And then I drug the whole assembly inside to put it on a flat surface. And that would make assembling it a little bit easier and hopefully it would turn out more square. Now this board is square, right? So if I make sure that the edge of the cement board goes to the two bys, this whole thing should be square. Let's hope I don't make another screw up. Weighing down the corners with some stuff was actually pretty easy. I used uh, some, some of the braces actually, which have some weight to them, and that bandsaw you see at the edge. That part was easy, uh, but putting the screws in proved to be real difficult. I had to use a countersink bit, or it was going to wreck my equipment. I tell you what, forget being as tough as nails. I want to be as tough as cement board and the screws that go into them. They are destroying my bits. Oh my gosh. Next. I'm not sure you can see this. I know the light is terrible, forgive me. But it does not go like this anymore. But it, it does twist. Let's see. Okay. Demonstrate that. So, um, to prevent that twist, I'm going to have to put those braces back in. I thought I'd be able to get away without them, but at least the door is square now. And to double check, I'm going to put it up there. That's what I should have done last time. Looks like I'm um, square with the bottom and the sides. Can't ask for more than that. When I step back here, the spacing on the top looks even as well. It's just pushed in a little bit. That's where those braces will come in handy. Actually, I'm going to put a cane bolt up through the top to secure this door. This door is going to be closed most of the time. This will be the door that fits over this one yeah there'll be a cane bolt on the bottom as well that kind of goes down and secures this door not permanently but it's going to become fixed most of the time it's getting there you know i'm pleased okay clamped it in place everything is square lined up wonderfully with the box see it yeah. And now I'll put the bracing on the inside. This one was like that. It's too short now. By a little bit. Here perhaps I'll just cut a little piece from the scrap that I got. And put that here. And then cut this straight and go into that. That might work. Cutting these braces from scraps was actually pretty challenging because I had to figure out creative ways to hold the wood down so not to lose my hand. Then I took these little pieces and I screwed them to the frame in such a way that I wouldn't see the screws as much as possible. I was actually digging the way that this was turning out. It looked a lot more robust than just the simple gussets that I had in place before. Well, there it is. Braces are in place. The doors are square. They fit in the hole real nice. So I'm getting there. So anyways, yeah, I'm gonna put this door aside and I'm gonna take this one down, put the remainder of the screws in, put it back up, shim it, to its final location, which means one half inch up. That'll make that smaller up top. And I'm also going to shim it a half inch this way 
and that'll make this a little bit smaller. This is about inch and a half, and up there should be about one inch. And when I'm done, there should be a half inch here, half inch there, half inch there, half inch there. That is the plan. I hear you, bird. I hear you. Hopefully that means you like it. Hey, nice doors. Hey, nice doors. Hey, nice doors. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Oh my god, I'll pick it up from there, Mark. I'm gonna prep uh, before I put it up on the shims by putting the hinges on the outside. Watch. The mark where I want the hinge. So I'm gonna take that mark, add a half inch right there. That's nine and a quarter, right? Instead of eight and three quarter or eight and five eighths, beautiful. Hinge. Got the holes marked, I already have one of them drilled. Now all the hinges are in place on the frame side. I'm going to shim the left door in place where it's got to be and then we'll screw the hinges to the door. I must say I was a little bit concerned about the door falling out of the opening here. So I was using a lot of caution here. Fortunately my expert technique got it positioned just right without any incidents. And I got a nice space underneath. Nice even reveal the whole way going up and along the top also about a half an inch and that'll be perfect for some insulation later on to squish in there. What do you think Ron? <laughs> My buddy Ron, he uh, taught me an awful lot when I first moved to Florida in about uh, the year 2000. I took a job in construction and he taught me a tremendous amount. Him and I have hung a lot of doors Kind of wishing that he was here with me right now. Anyways, let's uh, drill some holes and put these hinges in. Uh, I'm starting to think that these hinges are a little small for this door. It may work very well just right here, sitting here, but you know, bouncing down the road and stuff. Um, I mean, I can shim the doors before I travel. I don't know, we'll see how it works. If I feel like they're a little flimsy, I can always later on put bigger hinges on. So. Uh, for right now, I want to secure this thing because I feel like it's about to fall on my head. <laughs> gently, 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 gently. This is me contemplating if there's anything that I had forgotten before I go ahead and put these hinges in. And I also might have been contemplating uh, my growing back pain and <laughs> if I wanted to do anything physical like paddling. Fortunately my back didn't suffer that much from putting the hinges up on these very heavy doors. What do you think? It's gonna work? Let's see. Before the moment of truth, I had to remove the shims and there was still a clamp holding the door shut on the top inside. Welcome to my new shop. Hmm. Works pretty nice, actually. 
A couple of weeks at least have passed since I hung these doors and they're still working pretty nice. And a lot of other cool things have happened since this day. I can't wait to share them with you. I hope you guys enjoy the videos and we'll be here in the next one where I trim out these doors and get it so I can actually lock the darn things. It's a fun journey and the end result is going to be pretty neat. Thanks for watching guys.